Okay, as we promised, we've been joined by uh, Dr. Lawrence Oshoba, uh, who is a lecturer in the University of Lagos. Uh, he is a stakeholder because if you're a lecturer, you, by implication, you are a member of ASU, and whatever affects ASU as a body affects the individual too who belongs to that group. We'd like to say welcome to you, uh, Dr. Oshoba. Thank you very much for the opportunity to talk to you. Okay, uh, let's go straight to it. Um, we heard the brawl now is half salary for October and all that. So take us through what is really going on now because the strike has been called off and now this embroglio is still coming up. What is really the, the position now? Uh, thank you once again. Uh, members are very, very disappointed in that federal government not only did its own sign agreement with the union and several memoranda of understanding and memoranda of agreement, it can also not keep its integrity intact with the gentleman agreement with the Speaker of the House of Strategy, who promised that Mr. President will speak and that we should expect this positive response only for our October salary to be amputated as it were. Uh, the salary I was paid is not just a pro-rata salary, but rather the uh, one that cannot be, cannot, be, cannot be scientifically calculated based on realistic uh, 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 formula. Uh, what do I mean by that? You are giving a salary uh, when you remove 100% of all the documents. The taxes were removed 100%. Every other uh, NHIF, whatever other engagement or deductions were removed 100 percent but the balance was not uh, even paid based on uh, the number of days that you assume will work uh, during the month. This has been untold uh, despite on members and colleagues. So uh, the moral currently is very, very low, and uh, we have shown our disagreement or our disappointment with the profit, uh, protest that had uh, day before yesterday. So sending the signal to all who cares to know that academics are not casual workers, that you can determine uh, their pay based on the number of days they work. In fact, one thing is common to academics, we call it what is called academic freedom. Academic freedom by implications means we can plan and do our work uh, based on uh, I mean, how best we feel we can deliver that job done. So it is very, very wrong for the government to say we have not worked, even while we are on strike. Because I know since we resume, quite a number of postgraduate students have defended their PhD thesis. Some of them have descended, defended their master's thesis. This would not have been possible if some form of, I mean, supervision were not going on throughout the period of strike. And as is well known, our job has three major components, which is research, uh, community development, and teaching. And in fact, if you teach all the courses in the university system, if you are so brilliant, you cannot be promoted if your research does not match up to what is required for it to be promoted. Uh, we, are all, we are all in this country. Well, recently, the NUC celebrated uh, the citation of Nigerian University, the upward movement of Nigerian University in the world university rank during this period of strike. Would that have been possible if there are not quantum of publication that happened during this strike, where people, where colleagues were able to have ample time to sit down and write, I mean, publish on their work, some of their findings so find in recent years. Uh, whereas, I mean, what do you get in return for all this effort? Okay, uh, so, uh, doctor, just just so finally, that that is the case. Just let's let's understand. Maybe you have said it, and I didn't get the point well. Um, we hear of the complaint about October salary being paid half, half of the salary being paid. We don't seem to hear anything about from February to September, and we've been wondering: is it that they paid for other months? and it's just October that was paid half, or ASU accepted the fact that they shouldn't be paid from February to September and only from October that they resumed. 
because we've not heard much talk about other months, just October. Okay. Well, our salary was topped in February. The last salary payment was in February. So we have not received any salary since then from March. And the last salary that was received was prorata, as we mentioned, from October 14 that we resumed from this fight. So we have not received any salary from March till end of September. I mean, to up to October 14th or 13th, when we call out the strike on October 14th. So, and one of the gentlemen agreement with Mr. Speaker and all the concerns Nigeria that have intervened was that the federal government was going to pay us this salary because our, our job schedule is not only teaching, it's teaching research and community development. The evidence of the teaching and um, of the research and community development is, is ever, uh, I'm overwhelmingly seen in the ranking of three Nigerian universities in recent years, in recent, uh, in recent times. Well, that, that, that is um, serious. So, but you have talked about the gentleman agreement, like you said, that the Speaker of the House of Representatives um, had with you. Uh, and one of the provisions was that they were going to pay you the outstanding salaries. Can you walk us through yes. some, of, some more provisions of these gentleman agreements? What are the thing, things that were agreed upon that made the lecturers to go back on their words and say, okay, look, we're going back to class. What are some of these things that gave you so much hope to return to class? Well, as we all see, uh, based on Congress that we had and feedback we had from the National Executive Committee of uh, ASU, uh, the gentleman agreement entails that provision will be made in the 2023 budget concerning the funding of the university, concerning a new salary package, concerning an academic allowance. And Mr. Speaker, including Mr. President, when he was presenting the budget for next year, mentioned those things. So practically, we, we, we were assured that those provisions will be made in the budget. And this was confirmed when Mr. President presented the budget proposal to the National Assembly. In addition, it was mentioned, I mean, the, the, the Congress, we were briefed by the Congress, that Mr. Speaker has spoken with the President that he should consider, he should reconsider the stand of federal government on the no work, no pay. Because lecturer cannot be so treated in view of the fact that uh, our job is not only teaching. And that as part of finding a mutable solution to the impasse, our salary, the backlog of our salary will be paid. So that was the gentleman agreement to be like now uh you people have been the lecturers have been protesting since monday or tuesday if i'm correct uh, mm -hmm. how long how long do you people intend to keep protesting and is it what's the plan what 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 are you going to do afterwards from here uh is it only the protest has asu met on their own and what is the way forward from here The way forward, sorry, please. The way forward, uh, if you can hear me, is that you continue to uh, agitate the mind of Nigerians and call this government what they are, in the sense that uh, they cannot, they have proven that they cannot resolve this issue so far. And this will tell evidently, this will tell evidently on the quality of the services that members will be rendering in the system. Because you don't expect somebody that has not collected salary for the past eight months that has bill to pay, that has bill to pay, uh, not to, to, to show his disaffection uh, in class. And I mean, just like the way the secondary and the primary education uh, system collapsed in this, in this, uh, in this, uh, in this country, uh, we might be seeing something towards that regarding the university education as well. Oh, that's, that's really serious. Very but, scary, well, actually. But, you know, apart from everything, there are some people who have argued that, um, 
We can't be seeing strikes every day from academicians, from lecturers, uh, from university system, where the university system was supposed to be like a mini country on its own. It has everything in the university. And people see this as going cap in hand to the federal government all the time for funding and everything. It really has to stop. Does ASU have any plan for the future? that they will move for autonomy, they will move for financial independence and everything that will make it work better and not rely on the federal government or any other government for that matter? Ah, well, that question, everything, but the federal government is the owner of the university system. That's why the president of Nigeria is a visitor to the federal institutions. So, and the policy of the federal government is what is being operated across the Nigerian institution. If you go to the section of the constitution, as, it, as of today, the funding of universities is responsibility of the federal government. And they have not abdicated that role. And even in their campaign and everything, they keep saying that education will be free up to university level. So I strongly believe that the issue, we are asking for autonomy. When we ask for autonomy, we're asking for autonomy in terms of autonomy in the management of the system. And, uh, and that is what we have been pursuing for a while. However, it is left for the government to go to the public and say, I mean, I'm going to, education is going to be free across all board to university level. And then not provide the requisite uh, 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 equipment and facility to make this, that environment conducive for learning. When, when, so, you, say, when I mean, you say management, several sorry, intervention are coming. Several... Just a moment, doctor. When you say management, to what extent do you want, does, does the university system want to be managed uh, by itself? Like... If you say management should be handed back to the university, uh, are you talking about management in terms of funds and academics, curriculum, and everything that is in the university, or it's just management and still expect funding to come from the federal government? Because if that's the case, I, I, he who pays the piper dictates the tune. No, there is nowhere in the world, as it is, there is nowhere in the world where the government abdicates responsibility concerning education. Even in the most of the best of the uh, 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 of the country that we we, we we aspire to go or we look towards like big things and the like, they, they still commit quite substantial amount to education. However, the system also makes sure that this the university education is is uh, I mean is competitive. What do I mean by that? In the sense in the sense that <clears throat> government does its part, the industry does its part. And then the parent also does its part. If you go to a country like Canada, for instance, up to 18 years old, the government pays the parent for them to budget for the university education of their of their of their of their of their wards. So when they get to the university, then they will not claim that they don't have funds to pay for the university uh, for the university education of their ward. But is that the case here? Yeah? Is anybody taking of the Nigerian child to invest in them so that when they get to the university, they have funds? to go to the university. That is not the case. However, as I said, the constitution as it is today promise that education is going to be responsible by the federal government. As the federal government change, is, ASU, is it ASU that will change the constitution to reflect that? ASU cannot change that. We can only do that whatever the federal government promise, whatever the constitution promise, you can only ensure or try to, I mean, I mean, twist the government to fulfill their obligation. In terms of running of the university system, the government council of the university, the chancellor of the university of the university system is also being appointed by the government as an overseer. So they have overriding factor in the decision that is taken. There is no decision even when it's taken at the Senate. Still have to go to the government council of the university. We are not quarreling with that. However, we are saying that the issue is that when we promise that you are going to do something, then whatever you, are going to, whatever you promise to do, you have to do it. You have several agreements with us, and then you fail to implement any of the agreement. Where is it done that the last increment for salary of professors, of lecturers, will be in 2009? Where is it done? It's not done everywhere. Is it, is it a sin for us to agitate for that, for improvements in our welfare? Okay. Well, uh, <laughs> Doctor, there's so much to talk about, and we're still hoping to have this interaction, hoping that at that time, uh, you will be talking and smiling more than you are doing today because the conditions hopefully will be better. We'd like to thank you for coming on the show this uh, today. 
Thank you very much. Well, that was Dr. Lawrence Oshoba, uh, a university in uh, Lagos, uh, oh, a lecturer, lecturer rather. <laughs> what is going well, on? <laughs> <laughs> It won't be it won't be so wrong. Well, a lecturer in the University of Lagos, and being a member of ASU, uh, it's also biting uh, hard on him. And well, this thing is like it's everybody that's involved Actually, because whether yes. you're a student, you're a parent, you're a lecturer, we're all feeling the impact. Mm -hmm. Or just society that has to have these young men and women just come home uh, without knowing right from left. It's easy to say when there is strike you need to go and uh, learn a trade or something. But mm. it doesn't always work that way. You need to pay money to learn a trade. You have to pay money. Sure. Money that could have been saved to pay your fees. Mm -hmm. You're pay, paying for the trade. And then suddenly government wakes up and says, as you come back, and then you're, you're still looking for the other money to go and pay. I know no knowledge is and wasted then they're anyway. Under a lot of pressure, if you, yeah. are, if you are active on social media, you would see students complaining bitterly about mm. the amount of pressure that they have to go through because they have to write an exam that is usually supposed to be like uh, three, three, three weeks mm -hmm. or two weeks at most. They have to write it in one week. Yeah. And for, for, you know, a session that they should have prepared for in three months, they have to prepare in one week. One week, yeah. That's not, that's not a very nice place to be in. It's not. Sure. And there's no way, like we were saying at the opening, that there's no way you can tell a lecturer that, okay, uh, since you didn't work, I'm not going to pay you. And then the lecturer leaves what he should have taught from February to September <laughs> because he was not paid and goes, he has to go yeah, back. Yeah, because somehow, it's not even somehow, he has to complete has the to curriculum. He needs to f finish, you know, whatever he has set out to mm -hmm. teach for the semester. That is the only way exams can happen and that is the only way complete education and learning would have happened. Mm -hmm. So whatever scripts he had to mark for a year, he will mark in one he week. Whatever mark. assignments he had to give for two That's semesters, he will pressure. be. So there's so much pressure everywhere. But we shouldn't be talking in the 21st century about uh, lecturers going on strike, people uh, relegating education to the background it's and all appalling. that. 2023 is coming. I, I do hope whoever will take the reins of leadership will look very, very critically at the education sector and make sure it's better. Because someone said that a country is not marked or the greatness of a country is not measured by the mm -hmm. money they have, but by the number of educated people that they have. Because you can be, um, what do they say in Nigeria? Money is rude. <laughs> <laughs> Money yes. We have been like that once when somebody in, in government said that the problem of Nigeria is not the money, it's how to spend it. Mm -hmm. And th there was boom. And that money couldn't get into something that today we could have been reaping. Now we are crying. We go out to import oil. We do... It's crazy. Nigeria, well, I said. All right, we'll continue having even more interesting conversations on the run-up. We're going on a quick break. When we return, another guest will be with us. Don't go anywhere. Stay with us.